Fourth grade lesson 9.3 is equivalent fractions and decimals, how they are the same number but written in different ways. And so we'll get additional practice at this. Our essential question is how can you record tenths and hundredths as a fraction and also as a decimal? Daniel spent a day hiking through a wildlife preserve. During the first hour of the hike, he drank six tenths liter of water. Oh, I like to write the numbers down just so I can kind of see them. Six tenths of a liter of water. How many hundredths of a liter of water did he drink? Okay, underline what we need to find. You guys know the drill by now. And we circle what we know, the information given. There it is. How can we represent a number in the hundreds place? Well, if I remember from the last lesson, a hundreds place, we had the ones place over here, but over here was the tenths, because dimes, 10 cents is a dime, and the hundredths place. Okay, so I need to get this number to end in the hundredths place somehow. All right, well, one way we can do that is write the fraction with a denominator of a hundred instead. So it is, let's do this as the tenths, first of all. Let's shade in six tenths. One, two, three, four, five, six. That is six tenths. And that same model, even on the hundredths one, there's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. The same amount as we had over here. Now they've just cut it up even more. Remember, changing that denominator is just cutting things up even more. So this one represented 6 out of 10. This one represents 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 out of 10. And so 6 tenths, if I multiply 10 times 10, remember with our equivalent fractions, that gives us 100. And whatever I do to the denominator, I must do to the numerator to keep it equivalent because I'm not changing the amount of pizza or candy or cake that I have there. I'm only changing the way I cut it. And it's still there. 6 times 10 is 60. So there's one way we could do it is to model it. For at first, we might use that to help us. Another way is just to go ahead and write 6 tenths as a decimal, but keeping in mind, I want the number to end in the hundreds place. So what does that look like? Well, 6 tenths means I have a 6 in the tenths place. Zero in front, right? I don't have any whole numbers. It doesn't say 4 and 6 tenths or anything like that. It just says 6 tenths, so we assume the zero in the front. 6 ends in the tenths place. And that's what 6 tenths is, but I really want this number to end in the hundreds place. So what I need to do is just add the number that I can add without changing the value, and that is 0. So now this is 60 hundredths, because it's 60 ends in the hundreds place now, is the same as 6 tenths. Yeah, that seems a little easy, right? So 6 tenths is the same as 60 hundredths. And when you think about it, that makes sense because, right, we've been talking about this tenths place being dimes. Well, how much money do you have when you have 6 dimes? You have 60 cents. Yes. All right, so Daniel drank 60 hundredths, 60 hundredths, or 0 0.60 liters of water. Why is 6 tenths equivalent to 60 hundredths? Because 6 tenths is like six dimes and that is 60 cents zero dollars and 60 cents that could be an explanation you could have explained that however that made sense to you that's what uh, for me that tenths place i remember that tenths place and that hundreds place value because i know in money that's my dimes that's my pennies 10 cents for a dime hundred cents for a penny to make a dollar. Let's look at another example. Jasmine collected 0 0.30 liters of water in a jar during a rainstorm. How many tenths of a liter did she collect? Equivalent, I don't know why that's crossed off there. Okay, equivalent decimals are like equivalent fractions equal to one another. They're decimals that name the same amount and you can write zero and 30 hundredths as a decimal that names tenths instead write zero and 30 hundredths as an equivalent decimal. We need to show zero and 30 hundredths in the place value chart below. We're gonna put zero and 30 hundredths. And we notice here that there aren't any hundredths. So it's not gonna really affect the value if I drop that zero hundredths off of there. And so now I've just got the three tenths and that's it. 
I don't have any ones, I don't have any hundreds, I'm just going to put three tenths there. And we can write zero and thirty hundreds as zero and three tenths. So they're the same, those are equivalent. It's still three dimes, it's still thirty cents, three dimes. Another way we can write zero and thirty hundredths as a fraction with the denominator of ten. So we would start by writing zero and thirty hundredths as a fraction. Zero and thirty is thirty hundredths. Thirty hundredths written as a fraction is thirty hundredths, right? Same thing, thirty hundredths, same thing. Write thirty hundredths as an equivalent fraction, but with a denominator of ten. Here's that simplifying fractions again. And we have 30 hundredths, what can I, what number will divide evenly into both of them? Well, with both of them having zeros on the end, it's that 10. Let's get that 10 down, and we want it to become a 10. So 100 divided by 10 gives me 10, and 30 divided by 10 gives me 3. That is 3 tenths. So Jasmine collected 0 and 30, or 0 and 3 tenths, or 3 tenths liter of water. Let's practice a few. If this is making sense of you, do the pause and play thing and see how you do, see if you get stuck, or see if you're able to get all the way through. Let's find out. We're going to write four tenths as hundredths place. Well, four tenths as equivalent fraction, uh, four tenths equals, four, if we want the denominator to be hundredths, then we would multiply 10 by 10. 10 times 10 equals 100, and whatever we do to the denominator, we must do to the numerator as well to keep it equivalent. 4 times 10 is 40. So now I have 40 hundredths. Okay, now we're writing 4 tenths as a decimal. Well, let's use this to help us out. That was 40 hundredths. We have 0 and 40 hundredths. If we just had the 0 0.4 and we wanted the hundredths place, I'm sitting here, this number ending in the tenths place, and I really want it to end in the hundredths place. Fine, there you go. Now it ends in the hundredths place. Four dimes, remember, is 40 cents. So that's why it plays out that way. So my decimal, if it, I want it to end in the hundredths place, is 0 and 40 hundredths. Let's look at some more. Okay, we need to write the number as hundredths. I'm going to underline that hundredths in fraction form and in decimal form. Okay, starting here, if I want my ten, my tenths, I should say, to be hundredths, I would need to multiply by ten. And if I do that to the denominator, we know by now I must do the same to the numerator to keep it equivalent. Seven times ten is seventy. Now I want to write 70 hundredths, 70 hundredths as a decimal. That means I need 70 ending in the hundredths place. That's that second place over. Let's go ahead and put this here. Place values. This is tenths, just so your brain is adapting to it. And this is hundredths, hundredths, I'll put, hundredths, the hundredths place. Okay, so I need that to end in this place value here. So we're going to put zero because there's not a whole number in front of here. If there was a whole number, that's what I'd put, but there's not. And then I need 70 hundredths. I need the 70 to end in the hundredths place, and there it is. So these are the two answers for that one. Let's take a look at this next one. They want it as a fraction and as a number that ends, a decimal that ends in the hundredths place. Well, let's end this one in the hundredths place. This is zero and... 5 tenths, I need it in the hundreds place, so we'll just add that place value without changing how many tenths, because we do know 5 dimes is 50 cents, so that makes sense. Just put that zero on there to end us in the hundredths place. Okay, what about as a fraction? That kind of pulls back memory from previous chapter. We have 5 sitting in what place value? The tenths place. 5 tenths is our fraction. Now, if you wanted to bring it up a notch, you could simplify that fraction, but you don't have to right now. At some point, you will have to. Um, and if you recognize 5 divides into both of them, you would be able to divide both numerator and denominator by 5 to get the simplified version of this fraction. You would notice that it's 1 half. And by the way, isn't 50 cents half a dollar? Same thing, right? Okay, connections, just helping you make connections. 3 tenths, we want it written as a fraction. And it is as a fraction, but we want a fraction in the hundredths place with a hundred denominator, and then we want it written as a decimal to the hundredths place. So let's start by getting that denominator to a hundred. 
What do I do to get that? Multiply by 10. You're going to see that all the way through. 3 times 10 is 30. Whatever we do denominator, we must do to numerator. That is red as 30 hundredths. So we have 0 and 30 ending in the hundredths place. Ta-da. Boom. Boom. Now they want us to write the number as tenths in a fraction form and a decimal form. This time we're focusing in on that tenths place, dialing it back a little bit. All right, well, if I want 0 0.40, 0 and 40 hundredths to be tenths, um, that's just a zero. There are no hundredths there, no pennies. So I can just call that 0 and 4 dimes, 0 and 4 tenths. Okay, what about as a fraction in the tenths place? Well, now let's go from here. This is four tenths. When I say four tenths, you can almost picture it four tenths, four sitting in the tenths place. There is your decimal in the tenths place and your fraction with a ten denominator tenths place. Hopefully these are starting to kind of fall into place for you. Eighty hundredths. We want this to be in the tenths place, okay, well, how can I change that denominator to become a 10? 100 divided by 10 equals 10. And if I divide 100 by 10, I need the denominator by 10. I have to divide the numerator by 10 as well. 80 divided by 10 is 8. There we go, 8 tenths. And writing that as a decimal, we want the 8 to end in the tenths place, 0 and 8, landing in the tenths place. Ta-da. And finally, we have 20 hundredths. I want the decimal to be the tenths. I would have to divide by 10, 100 divided by 10 to get that. And if I do that, to, if I divide by 10 to the denominator, I must do the same to the numerator. 20 divided by 10 is 2. And now as the decimal, this is 2 tenths, or 2, 0 and 2, landing in the tenths place, ta-da. I hope that helped put things into place, and I hope you're ready for Think Central, but if you're not, let me know. We'll practice a few more together.